second time for intro. <laughs> Always have to screw up something. But anyway, hey guys, um, still freezing. It's so cold. I'm trying to stay warm. Are you guys staying warm? <laughs> um, okay, so here's the second Paul video. So in this video, I'm going to read Paul's three statements. And I think there's a, another, maybe a couple shorter ones that I'll, I'm going to add in there. But um, there's three main ones. There's one from the 6th. It's basically the officers writing what Paul said when they were still at their house. So when they were still at, when he was still at his mom's house. And so that's the 6th. So that would be the same day that Timothy died. So right after it happened. So that's where the first statement comes from. And then on the 8th. And then on the 14th. And the 14th is the most interesting one because that's after they already arrest him. So things change a little bit. You know what I'm saying? The gig's up, buddy. So the first couple, it's like, no, oh, my, my mom loves us. We didn't do anything. No, we was to, to hunger strike and blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, by the 14th, uh, yeah, we see the we see the real side of Paul and hints of uh, psychopaths. Some of the stuff he says, I feel like there is a good chance he may be a psychopath. Um, now, after reading uh, this report, dang it. So, OK. So I'm going to play a news clip first, actually, though. It's not new. So when they talk about like a hearing, it's before the trial. But I just thought it'd be interesting to play. It's an old clip. It's before the trial. It shows Paul a, like a few, not even a minute of him kind of speaking at this other hearing. I figured those of you that maybe don't know who Paul is or just are new to this case, you guys could kind of see who he is, you know, um, since this video is about him. And those of you that aren't new to the case, um, it'll kind of refresh your memory, maybe. I don't know. Maybe you haven't seen this clip. Like I said, it's before the trial. It talks about the uh, deal he tries to offer um, to just plead guilty to the CA charges and get like six to eight years. But the judge said no. He wants to take it to trial. So I don't know what's going to happen with Paul. I'm, oh, they are. He is taken. Yeah, never mind. Because then they are. He isn't. Uh, Paul isn't going to trial though. Yeah, that's right. We watched that hearing with Paul. The judge said, you know, he'll take the state's considerations, but he doesn't have to follow them. And he's going to make a decision on the sentencing. It'll be interesting to see. Okay, here's the clip though. You sound sorry to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I'll help you. Yes, sir. While facing first degree child abuse himself, Paul Ferguson took the stand today in a hearing for his mother, Shanda Vander Ark, who is also charged with murder in the death of her son, 15 year old Timothy Ferguson. The two are accused of torturing and starving Timothy to death. In the week leading up to his death, Paul testified that he noticed his brother looking thinner. I took pictures of it and sent them to her and told her that I wouldn't say that I said I to stop, but I was trying to hint at it. I... To stop what? To stop feeding him so horribly, give him something nutritional, give him what he needed. He didn't deserve this. Timothy, who Paul said was autistic with motor and speech impairment, weighed just 69 pounds at the time of his death. Investigators added he was fed rice or pieces of bread laced with hot sauce. On the stand, detectives read aloud the text messages exchanged between Paul and his mother, including this one. He told me a week and a half ago that he wanted to be thin to make me feel bad for punishing him. You don't get to grump at him for that, though. I already let into him plenty for it. Investigators say the two also punished Timothy by routinely giving him cold baths or cold water splashes and refusing to let him sleep. Defendant, he just laid down again. Mr. Ferguson, okay. Defendant, please go get him up. Defendant, feel free to dump some cold water on him. Defendant. And even if he sits up right before you get there or as you get there, I honestly don't care if you get a little rough with him. According to her, the incoherence was fake. And what do you mean by the incoherence? He, he was incapable of moving, incapable of responding. He couldn't, he wasn't speaking or anything. Defendant, okay, let me rephrase that question then. Do you honestly believe we should be worried? 
Mr. Ferguson, IDK, which I understand to believe I don't know. I'm just tired of him being such a nuisance. Detectives testify they found an Amazon Prime also, box and a blue tarp in the closet underneath a staircase, okay, really which was sorry. later determined to be upset. Timothy's bedroom. The first photograph here is a lock on the freezer. Investigators also discovered an alarm on the closet store, two-way surveillance cameras placed throughout the home, and locks placed on the refrigerator and all freezers. And what was the purpose of the locks? Um, it was to keep Timothy from attempting to steal food that was going to be used for actual meals. And Paul testified that he made a plea deal to plead guilty to the child abuse charge in exchange for his testimony and a prison sentence reduced to six to eight years. The presiding judge did decide to send this case to trial. Interview with Paul. The following are summaries of statements made by Paul while at her home on 7-6. I explained to Paul he was not under arrest or in custody, also that he was free to leave at any time. Timothy wore baggy clothes. Paul came home around 2-10. He took Benadryl. Shonda knew he came how and texted him to take his meds. He heard Timothy snoring like a daggum freight train. <laughs> Paul didn't wake up to any thuds. He was an immense heavy sleeper. He woke up at 6 a.m. So he woke up at 6 a.m. He was supposed to be dropped off by Mama at Starbucks near his work. Shonda alerted him that Timothy wasn't breathing. So Shonda alerted Paul that Timothy wasn't breathing. They got him off the bed and attempted to resuscitate. He thought Timothy was okay, but he wasn't. He failed because he always told Timothy he would protect him. Yeah, we know, Paul, now. We know your, your, your uh, stepsister's telling us how you're a bully him and... And you have a C or a SA charged on him. Like, I am still in shock. And I'm just in shock about that. That there is like a charge. And it, I'm pretty sure it was against him. If not, that would mean Gabriel. But I don't think it was Gabriel because, no, it couldn't have. Because this is when he was living at um his dad's house. It has to be Timothy who it was against. It has to be. Because he was, G was not, a, you know what I'm saying? He was at with his mom. So, dang it. Anyway, um, he thought maybe Mama had fed him and Mama thought maybe he had fed him. Fed him meant to take him food and make sure he actually ate it. Timothy made his own food back before the last couple weeks. Paul is so lost on how this all happened. He only had verbal quarrels with Timothy, nothing physical. He would never lay his hands on him. Timothy had been forcing himself to throw up back in January. He never talked to Paul about not eating. Why is that wording it like that? I guess they're just relaying what he said. He never talked to Paul about not eating. He saw some scratches on his face, but was guessing they were from the fall. Shonda and Timothy never argued, or I guess Timothy never argued. Paul had been living with Shonda for two years. Timothy would sneak food. Timothy had bedwetting problem. Apparently, Timothy had a surgery to reduce pain while urinating. The food was locked because Timothy had a stealing problem. He recently took over the responsibility of paying for groceries. He was stepping up to his mother to help his mother with the burden. Timothy would always say he is hungry, but we knew he wasn't hungry. Unlike Paul, he did not have an enhanced metabolism. We always say he's hungry, but we knew he But how is he even saying that when we know, like, yeah, he was hungry. Hold on, I got to what? Those, I got, like, dust because those records. Hold on one second. Where are we at? Unlike Paul, he did not have enhanced metabolism. So saying he would always say he's hungry, but we knew he wasn't hungry. Unlike Paul, he did not have an enhanced metabolism. Paul or Timothy ate bread yesterday, then got up into his bed before Paul left for work. That was the last time Paul actually talked to him. He didn't know how he wasn't aware of how frail and thin Timothy had become. He was not sure how Timothy got all the bruising on his body. The cameras were put into Timothy's room because he tended to strip down and walk around naked. Or G's room, because G's the one that did that, right? He was guessing the camera in the bathroom was to monitor Timothy when he was bathing. Is that normal? Let's monitor a a teenager going through puberty, like at the worst time of when you know what I'm saying. Let's monitor them to going to uh, taking a shower. Yeah, that that's really uh, nice. I mean, we know it, that's not true, but it's like even that, even the excuse you're given is like ridiculous. It could have also been to monitor G related to his stripping problem. The leg shackles were used because Timothy kept moving when he was standing up against the wall. Oh my God, he moved. Uh-oh. 
Paul told me I would have to ask Mama what the shackles were used for. I feel like I failed him regarding Timothy. The shackles were used for Timothy when he was in timeout. They would set a timer. They were used it a couple times in February. He tries to do a kickstand when standing against the wall. Shackles prevented him from cheating out of his punishment. His mother would tell Paul what to do regarding to punishment for Timothy. The last time Timothy got in trouble was prior to his recent hunger strike. He never got shut in the closet downstairs. After it was cleaned out, Timothy would sometimes take a nap in there. He did not know why there was a motion sensor on the door to the closet. He knew Timothy was misbehaving, but did not know why Shonda was punishing him. Timothy sometimes tried to blame Paul for his behavior, but Mama would defend Paul. Timothy get punishments for eating food that was designated for other people. Wait, Timothy would get punishments for eating food that was, wow. We've never robbed him of food, never. Shonda would never put her hands on him. He's gotten close to hitting him. So as I think they're saying Paul's gotten close to hitting him, but walked away before doing it. My mother's amazing. Those shackles were never used for anything that wasn't necessary. He wasn't always there when the shackles were being used. Paul had been making sure Timothy was eating food over the last couple weeks. They didn't take him to the hospital because they didn't know anything was wrong. They didn't think anything was wrong. His phone would not have any evidence related to what happened to his brother. <laughs> yeah, right. That's where they found most of it. He has had moments he wanted to hurt Timothy, but his mama would calm down. The interview ended after Shonda entered the room and spoke with... I don't know, spoke with... I don't know who's blocked out. While speaking with... I guess Paul. But while speaking with Paul, Shonda in the living room of the home, I asked about the conflicting statements regarding the shackles. Shonda stated that she was not aware of the shackles were used on Timothy, I guess you're saying, yeah. Shonda also denied knowing anything about why the hot sauce was in the ba basement bathroom. This short conversation was not recorded. Now here's statement. This is Paul Ferguson's statement. Paul advised he clocked out of work at 1.40 a.m. this morning. Paul advised he received a ride home from work from his manager and arrived home at 2 a.m. At 2.10 a.m., Paul stated he took some Benadryl to help him sleep. Paul advised after taking the Benadryl, he went downstairs and headed to his bedroom. Paul advised he could hear Timothy snoring loudly at this time. Paul advised he woke up at 6 a.m. to get ready for work. But see, that's a lie because I got to go back and watch that part of the trial. Because um, I swear they said after she goes and calls him pathetic and holds his mouth to see you could breathe out of your nose and she leaves... They said that it, like shortly after that is when they think he died. So I, I feel like he's lying. And if he's saying that he was snoring at like a little after 2 a.m., I don't think that's I think that's a lie. But I have to go back through and see the details on that. And uh, at approximately 11 o'clock, uh, 2303 in military time, 11 o'clock or so, um, do you observe Ms. Vander Ark on that video? I do. And what does she do? Uh, on the video around that time that you mentioned, Ms. Vander Ark is observed placing a, a tarp into the closet and kind of spreading it out as a makeshift bed. And after she does that, what happens after that? After she lays the tarp on the floor, she is seen dragging Timothy by the arms uh, onto the tarp and into the room. And are you able to see Timothy, Timothy's body at that point in time? I am. And uh, what condition would you describe? Or what, how would you describe his physical condition at that point? His eyes were open, but not really seeing anything. Um, he was he appeared to be unresponsive. He didn't make any. He didn't speak at all. He he moaned a few times. Um, it was very concerning watching that and appear and seeing his appearance. And uh, you've also obviously had an opportunity to see both the photographs of Timothy at the scene as what well, after he was deceased and. The autopsy photos, did he appear substantially the same way that he appeared in those photographs as well? He did. Very, very thin uh, bones protruding. Um, in particular, he wasn't wearing any pants, so I could see his, his hip bones and his knee joint very prominently displayed as she positioned him in front of the camera. And did it appear that he was wearing a diaper? He was. He was wearing an adult diaper. And uh, you said that Ms. Van der Ark positioned him in front of the camera so that so that his, what was facing the camera, I guess? His face was facing the camera. It was the primary focus of the cameras to keep a, a view of his face. And d d that camera also records audio, does it not? It does. And did it record any audio from Ms. Vander Ark as she was pulling Timothy into the closet and positioning him on the floor? It did. Um, it, I could hear Ms. Vander Ark tell Timothy that he is pathetic um, and then adds, a, but I already knew that as she was dragging him in. 
Um, she also makes co a comment to him that you owe me the biggest apology in the world and uh, suggests that he wouldn't be able to leave the restroom unless she or leave the room for restroom breaks unless he, she receives an apology from him. And then does she leave the room at that point? She does. Uh, does she come back a little while later? I believe it was approximately 15 minutes later she comes back into the, the room. And uh, during that time period, though, are you able to observe Timothy on that video? I do. And does Timothy do something between the time that she leaves the first time and the time she comes back? Initially, she had positioned him on his side with his face facing the camera. And over the period of about 15 minutes, he rolled onto his back. Um, so his face was no longer visible. When she comes back in the second time, what does she do? She repositions him so his face is visible to the camera. Um, she has one of her Great Danes come into the room and instructs the Great Dane to lick his face, trying to get what appeared to me trying to get a reaction out of him, and even makes a comment to the dog saying that, see, he reacted to you. And um, so does the Great Dane, does, does the Great Dane stay in the room at that point or not? It kind of wants, steps over him, you know, licks his face, investigates, and then eventually leaves the room after she provided the dog instructions to lick his face. And what does she do at that point? During this time, and previously while I observed Timothy in the room, uh, he was taking short, shallow breaths through his mouth, um, kind of picture how a fish out of water would breathe with gasping for breath through their mouth. And she clamps his mouth shut, uh, tells him that he doesn't need to breathe like that, and then holds his mouth shut for a period of time until he's forced to take breaths through his nose and tells him, see, you didn't need to breathe through your mouth like that. You're being a dummy or an idiot, something along those lines. And does she leave the room at that point? She does. And is that the last time anyone actually has any contact with Timothy in that room? That's correct. And uh, you've had an opportunity, that, does that camera continue to record all through the night into the next morning? It does. Because this was about 11, between 11 and 11.30 at, on July 5th, is that correct? That's correct. And into, so the camera records into the next morning, is that correct? That is correct. And um, you've had an opportunity to watch all of that video, is that, is that my understanding? Yes. And at some point, does it appear that and that you're not a medical doctor, I understand that, but does it appear that Timothy actually passes away while in view of that camera? Yes, uh, it appears that way to me. He can be seen, his chest rising, lowering very slightly, uh, small little movements, and then there is a point in time where you stop seeing that, and his body just kind of relaxes, and it appears to me that he has, he has died at that point. And does he, does, from that point on, is there any movement of his body on, and until the next morning, is there any movement of his body at all to indicate that he's moving or alive? There is not. There is no more movement from his body from that point. Okay, so real quick, um, so they don't say what time, I guess. He says hours after. They say something like hours after he, they put, she puts him into the room. So, I mean, that could be two hours, that could be three hours. So that could be anywhere from b between 1.30, 2.30, even 3.30, because hours, I don't know what they mean by that. So I, I guess, I don't know where I heard, like, sh I swear I heard somebody say in the trial shortly after that she left, you know, where she put him in there and left that he died. But when I rewatched it, I can only find a part where they say hours after. But still, I wanted to show you that clip. It's horrible. It may, oh, I can't even, yeah, it's hard to watch, I know. Anyway, um, so he gets up at 6 a.m. to get ready for work this is when he woke up he advised his mother Shonda called out to him while he was downstairs Paul was not sure what time this was Paul advised Shonda told him to help her pull Timothy from the top bunk all right so we have Paul advised he took each of Timothy's ankles Shonda grabbed Timothy under his arms and they laid him on the floor Paul advised Shonda then began CPR Interview of Paul. I spoke with Paul at his home throughout the investigation. The conversation was audio recorded. During the conversation, Paul denied ever physically assaulting Timothy or witnessing anyone else assaulting him. He was aware that Timothy was malnourished and explained Timothy's food consumption was restricted. I will complete a more detailed report, including statements made by Paul after reviewing the audio recording. At approximately 3.15 p.m., Detective Trombley, Officer Stefanich, and I returned to their house to execute the search warrant. We contacted Paul Ferguson at the front door and explained the situation to him. I provided the search warrant to Paul for his review. 
Paul was asked to accompany Officer Stefanich to the police department to speak with Detective Piesk. Paul was cooperative and accepted a ride with Officer Stefanich to the PD. And this is the day where we watched the interview um, on the last live. It was this. They took him and it was July 7th. So that's when we watched that. Detective Trumbly and I executed the search warrant within the home. See Detective Trumbly's supplement regarding the evidence collected. Numerous photos were taken during the process. I interview spoke or interview Paul Ferguson. So now we we saw his interview from the 7th. Now this is the 8th. So this would be a day after that video interview that we watched on the last live. It says, I spoke with Paul Ferguson on 7-8 in the interview room at the Norton Shores Police Department. The interview was audio and video recording. Paul was transported to the Norton Shores Police Department during the execution of a search warrant at his home. I read Paul's Miranda rights prior to questioning him. The following are short summaries of statements made by Paul during the interview. For additional details, please review the interview recording. Timothy was forced to sleep in the basement closet with an alarm clock on the door. Timothy was forced to take cold ice baths as punishing for stealing food or disobedience. He was placed in handcuffs and or shackles to restrict his movement. He was al only allowed to eat bread or bread with hot sauce for approximately the last month. Hot sauce was used as a punishment for stealing food or disobedience. He was forced to stand with his hands on his head as a punishment. Paul sent two photos of Timothy to Shonda on June 13th that showed how malnourished he was. Paul knew Timothy was malnourished and needed more food. Paul used zip ties to restrict Timothy's hand movement on more than one occasion. Paul and Shonda, Shonda administered ice baths to Timothy. Shonda told Paul to lie to investigators about where Timothy was found deceased at. Paul lied and told investigators that Timothy had been sleeping on his bunk bed. Timothy was actually found deceased in his room, which was a small closet with only a tarp on the floor. Paul and Shonda dragged Timothy out of the closet. Timothy had on a sweatshirt and a diaper. They put pants on him after finding him deceased. Shonda monitored the home via camera system. Paul and Shonda used their cell phones to text back and forth about feeding and punishing Timothy. Paul hit Timothy several times on the head, including the face, with an open hand. Paul dropped Timothy while moving him, and Timothy hit his head. He thought it was the back of Timothy's head that hit the floor. He regrets how Timothy was treated, but thought his mother knew what was best. He and his mother were doing what was in Timothy's best interest. He and his mother both loved Timothy. He felt guilty and knew he could have done something to help Timothy. The punishments, including only bread, hot sauce, ice baths, handcuffs, and shackles, were all Shonda's ideas. He knew his actions were wrong and would accept punishment for them. On July 14th, I stood before Magistrate Wirra and swore to the felony warrant for first-degree CA charges against Paul. Detective Swanker and I, along with NSPD Road Patrol, arrived at and executed the arrest warrant. Paul was arrested and transported and was seated in the interview room. He removed the handcuffs. They, I mean, they removed Paul's handcuffs. I advised Paul he was not free to leave and advised him of his Miranda rights. Paul advised he understood his rights and agreed to speak with us. Paul provided the following statements. Stated while his mother Shonda was not home, Paul was in charge of keeping an eye on him in case he was misbehaved. Timothy would misbehave by stealing food, but now thinks Timothy was actually hungry. Timothy would have to go to his room with food and his iPad until Mama got home. Timothy would have to go up on his bed, but this was before he was moved into the closet downstairs. Paul was not sure if Timothy was moved to the closet due to punishment or due to a broken bed frame. Paul stated, Timothy slept in the closet downstairs on a tarp that was purchased off Amazon. Timothy was fed bread and with hot sauce. He was also fed rice with hot sauce. He did not like the hot sauce. The hot sauce was for punishment. Paul was not sure why Timothy was punished, but thought it was because he would f sneak food. Timothy would be punished for claiming to need support for standing or leaning on stuff. He noticed how thin Timothy was becoming and suggesting they give him food. At one point, Timothy became unresponsive, but he was able to get him to respond. He cooked Timothy some eggs with cheese and toast. He did not tell Shonda he made the eggs. He was told not to give Timothy food without asking. There were no cameras upstairs or outside. Shonda did not restrict his food consumption or Timothy's maybe. Paul stated he would tell Shonda if Timothy misbehaved to get him in trouble. Surveillance cameras were in the basement to monitor and watch him. He and Shonda had access to watch the surveillance via apps on their cell phone. Timothy was homeschooled in Michigan. 
Timothy was unresponsive the day before he passed away. He had to pick Timothy up the day before he passed away. Shonda told him Timothy was just acting. He put Timothy in an ice bath sometime after four, despite questioning if it was the right thing to do. He made sure the cold water was as cold as it could get. Ice baths were a form of punishment. He and Timothy did not receive the same punishments as, or he and G did not receive the same punishments as Timothy. So there you go. I mean, never questioned Timothy's punishments, admitted to coming up with forms of punishments. So there, this is all Paul. So Paul admitted uh, to coming up with forms of punishments and then he never questioned his punishments. Timothy's Paul would punish Timothy without Shonda's instruction. So here we go. He's admitting to doing it without Shonda telling him to. Paul would watch Timothy do wall sits for an extended period of time to ensure he did them right. Paul would make Timothy run up and down the stairs off the back patio for punishment at Shonda's request. Timothy would have to do 10 to 20 sets of stairs. If Timothy was caught on camera eating anything, he would be punished and Paul would enforce the punishment. There were times Timothy was not allowed to sleep. Timothy did not get eat like Paul and G get to eat. Shonda would make him throw up if he snuck food. Timothy, I mean. Paul was told to make Timothy throw up. Paul would tell Timothy to fake making himself throw up because Paul could not make him do it. Paul felt Timothy did not always need the food he snuck. Paul stated he knows he should have stopped it. He stated he knows he is guilty. He deserves every punishment that comes his way. He would get angry at Timothy at times and did not want Timothy there. He never wanted Timothy truly gone. He thinks it was a couple days before Timothy died when Timothy was still functional and going up the stairs but still needed support. As Shauna said, I'm so tempted to just leave him on the side of the road, Paul said. Yeah, same here. Timothy was punished for acting like he needed support to move or stand. Paul would administer California Reaper and Scorpion Pepper hot sauce onto his mouth for punishment. Timothy would have to swallow the hot sauces. Timothy did not like the hot sauce. The toilet was out of range of the camera. Paul would put a toothbrush in Timothy's mouth to assist with self-induced vomiting. Oh my god. Paul told Timothy to fake vomit. Paul made Timothy do stairs even though Shonda could not see it on camera. Punishment would change if one form of punishment was not effective. Stair and wall sit punishment stopped when Timothy became too thin. Sometimes Timothy was given peanut butter sandwiches and Raymond. Paul did not know what Timothy's bad behavior was. Timothy would whine when he had to do stairs. Timothy eventually stopped complaining. Timothy's wrists would be zip-tied behind his head. Timothy's ankles were zip-tied together. Timothy would have to stand facing the wall with his hands behind his head for prolonged periods of time. Paul did what he told. Paul said it did not seem weird to him to punish Timothy or deprive him of food. Timothy was not allowed to use electronic devices or look at someone else's device. Timothy was punished if he looked at someone else's device. Paul stated Timothy could be destructive. Motion sensors and alarms were implemented to keep Timothy confined to the closet. Paul stated he does not think Timothy likes sleeping in the closet. Paul stated he did what he was told. Paul would make Timothy stand against the wall if he got mad at him. Paul did not trust Timothy to behave. Timothy would have to stand against the wall with his hands behind his head for several hours. Paul would set timers while Timothy would stand against the back door upstairs where there were no cameras. Well, I'm just thinking real quick on that. Paul liked getting praised by Shonda. Paul admitted he liked having power over Timothy. Yeah. So all the stuff we were saying, um, he likes getting praise. He liked having power. He admitted he liked having control over Timothy. He admitted having power over somebody feels good. He was physically forceful with Timothy. If Timothy stole food, he would go without food for additional days. Paul admitted he could have given Timothy food. Paul admitted he willingly punished and starved Timothy. Paul admitted he was trying to keep himself alive by sneaking food. Paul and Shonda denied him that. Paul was not sure how many ice baths Timothy was forced to take. Paul stated after he, uh, he often thought Timothy was fake and needing support. Paul stated Timothy was forced to take ice baths the night before he died. Paul stated he had to undress Timothy and placed him in the ice bath. Paul stated he would smack Timothy with an open hand on his head, shoulders, back, or when he was hungry at Timothy for not listening. Or angry, sorry. Or he's angry at Timothy for not listening. Man. Timothy was allowed only a sip of water. Paul stated he never goes a day without food or beverage. Paul thinks Timothy was starved because he would take food. Paul admitted he would push Timothy. He admitted that when Timothy was getting very thin, Paul would still physically assault him. He 
He stated he dropped Timothy the morning before Timothy was unresponsive, trying to move him from the closet. Paul stated, I'm basically his murderer as well. I did not stop it. I could have. He could have stopped it. Paul stated he could have stopped it, but he didn't. Paul stated that he may have he may be the cause of Timothy's starvation, but wasn't sure. Paul stated, if I did, just throw me in prison for the rest of my life. Paul stated, if I was a part of it, I deserve it. Paul stated, he used whatever ice was in the ice maker to add to Timothy's baths. Paul stated, he could not have sat in the ice baths. Timothy would have to sit in the ice baths naked. Timothy did not like the ice baths. Paul stated, the day before he died, he was not functional. Paul stated, he had to take... Timothy's clothes off while he was laying on the floor. Paul stated he had to pick up Timothy up and place him in the ice bath. The first ice bath was about 30 minutes long. Timothy was in the ice bath the day before he died from around 4 to 11. Paul stated Shonda dragged him from the ice bath to the closet. Shonda found Timothy deceased in the closet. Shonda called out for Paul and told him he was not breathing. Shonda pulled Timothy out of the closet, demonstrated how he did 30 chest compressions. He administered rescue breaths. He could smell vomit on his breath. Not sure if Shonda administered chest compressions. He accepts responsibility for what happened to Timothy. He admitted he was willing participant in implementing punishment to him. Admitted to feeling powerful over implementing punishment to him. Stated he hates himself. I asked Paul what he thought you know, an appropriate punishment would be for him. Paul stated he did not know. Paul stated he would tell him he couldn't do certain punishments anymore because he needed support. Paul stated he could have done something, but he didn't. He was afraid she would yell at him. Adam would not have let the punishments happen to Timothy. Power got to my head. Yeah, it did. Man. Paul stated he wanted to hear Shonda was proud of him. Asked if he was going to prison. I advised Paul he would be going to jail and there was a process within the courts. He asked if there was any way to testify to make sure Mama is put in prison for this. Stated he doesn't care how long he has to go to jail as long as she doesn't hurt anyone else. Stated he thought he felt powerful but was powerless. Stated he was drunk with power. Stated Grammy probably wasn't allowed to come inside the house because it was dirty or to prevent her from seeing Timothy. Paul stated when his brother Timothy was a minor, he essayed his sister. Okay, so it's his sister? What? I want to know who is he saying right here? His oldest brother he's trying to say did it? Paul stated when he was living in Oklahoma in elementary school, he fake admitted to essaying a female student. So is that another victim of his? Because they said it was his brother. I thought it was his brother was one. He stated he was unaware of any essay involving Shonda. Stated he never essayed blank. Which I think is Timothy. I think this is saying Eric, right? Isn't that his oldest brother? I think he's trying to say Eric did his sister. And then he's saying he admitted to doing a student, but it was a lie. And then he's saying that he never essayed Timothy. And that's what he, it sounds like he was charged with the Timothy one. Um, That was what that whole thing was about. But he's trying to deny that, it looks like. Paul stated blank had a kidney stone when they were younger. Paul stated Shonda asked Paul to delete the text conversation between the two of them, as well as any photographs of Timothy, I'm sure. But I wonder, he's unaware of any essay involving Shonda. I just, I wonder what, what that's, like, what the truth is. Paul stated Shonda told him to delete his search history on Google. His search history was on Savari. Shonda told Paul to lie about finding Timothy on his bed before first responders arrived. He doesn't think it is true Timothy did not have feeling on his tongue. Oh, he doesn't think it is true that Timothy did not have feeling on his tongue. Shonda told Paul to put his pants and belt on Timothy before first responders arrived. Paul stated the pants and belt were Paul's, not his. Timothy's. There were times she only had him wearing a diaper. Shonda did not want Timothy to have sheets or a blanket. Timothy may have been wrapped in a shower curtain when he was found dead. Okay, guys, that's all I have for this video. I am going to upload the that video, or it's an audio. They play the video for the jury, but we only get to hear the audio. In case you, those of you haven't heard it or you want to rehear it, it's the video where they find, well, audio, um, but it's coming from a video where they find Timothy, where Shonda finds Timothy. She calls for Paul. 
and then you could hear him calling 911. So I am going to play that. I'm going to try to turn up the volume so we could hear it better. So I think I'll try to just upload that real quick next. It'll be one of the, the next videos. Um, if not next, it'll be shortly if you guys want to hear it. All right, let me know what you guys think. Bye.